Hi, people of the YouTube. I'm Anna Maika, in case you don't know me. And this will only be the second video I will ever publicly make for this channel. So, uh, yeah, I'm very new at this. Please judge me kindly. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm in a very turbulent time of my life. I just quit university. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm changing the direction of my life again. And yeah, one of the things I really want to be doing more is, um, yeah, share my, share my story, share my, my ideas about things. So that's why I wanted to give more attention to this channel again. Um, yeah, this channel will be about social topics, psychological topics, um, all those kind of things, uh, and from an alternative and critical angle, like Anna Micah's angle. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I hope that I can help people um, reach more understanding and fulfillment in their life. That's my ultimate goal. But yeah, that sounds really big <laughs> for just a video. Uh, but I just wanted to let you know that that's um, yeah, my my ultimate idea behind what I'm doing in my life. So today we are going to talk about why our sensitivity is really a superpower, period. Because um, there's a lot of talk about high sensitivity in general. Um, but I notice there's always a tendency to focus on the negative aspects and the struggles. And yeah, I want to offer an alternative um, yeah, idea about that. So that's what we're doing today. Let me start off by telling you about what, high sens what a high sensitive person means or HSP. Um, this is apparently a scientific concept because the uh, scientist Elaine Aaron, she, um, she did research on this and she scientifically proved that it was a thing. And what does it mean? Um, according to her, around 15 to 20% of people, they are a highly sensitive person. And that means that they, uh, are more sensitive to sensory uh, stimulus. So um, that also means that sensory stimulus can get easily uh, overwhelming for these people. So they would probably not enjoy being in a very loud environment for long. So that's, for example, for hearing. Um, and if they are at a party, for a long time they will probably get uh, drained by that just because there's so much stimulation and they feel overstimulated and an alternative term for a high sensitive person is uh, so uh, sensory processing sensitivity um, which describes actually what is going on um, in the brain according to the theory and i personally like that um, way of explaining it because um, sensory processing sensitivity it um, suggests that people that are highly sensitive they have a deeper processing of sensory information so the same sensory information will like hit them harder they will get like as if you would turn up the volume um, button um, for people with high sensitivity compared to people with normal or <clears throat> lower sensitivity. So everything is just more intense and therefore everything also hits harder and high sensitive people need more time to recover from situations with a lot of stimulation and they might feel overstimulated. So um, yeah, that's my attempt at explaining um, the basics of what a high sensitive person um, 
is supposed to be. But I recommend you to definitely look further into that if you want to understand more about it. And a good website for that is <clears throat> hsperson.com. I will put a link somewhere on the screen or in the description. We will see. I'm kind of new at all of this technical YouTube stuff, so I have to figure it out along the way. Um, yeah, I, I identify myself <clears throat> as a highly sensitive person. And um, I do definitely feel like I've struggled with it in some situations. And I still do to some extent. So like I said, there's a lot of negative focus around this topic. Um, for example, how it, how it bothered me was that at school, when I was like a young child, I was really sensitive to the emotions of my teacher. Like she was not a very mentally stable person, um, at least as far as I know. And yeah, I could basically feel all of her emotional garbage. So that's also part of high, high sensitivity, like being able to sense other people's emotions very strongly. It depends on the person, like how it uh, manifests exactly, but that's, that's really a thing for me. Like I can, I can feel if someone is not feeling well and it feels like it's kind of intruding on my personal space to explain it like that. And, um, yeah, that I had a super bad time at school. That's in general a thing. You can watch my previous video that was about why I was homeschooled and that was also talking about, um, yeah, why I, like, like how I was struggling with being a high sensitive person in school. Um, yeah, but, you know, I don't think it's a bad thing that you can sense other people's emotions because like they are there. It's just if it's like intruding on your own feeling of well-being, then that, that really sucks. Um, yeah, I, I learned a lot better to like shield myself from overstimulation. I can't exactly say how I did that. Probably through mindfulness exercises a little bit. Um, but yeah, it just it just got easier with age and like trying to deal with it with the negative sides. But I still still I can get very overstimulated in some situations. I'm particularly sensitive to sound and now after after um, this whole COVID situation, I'm sorry, I have to mention it, um, where I was less exposed to environments with a lot of stimulation, I I noticed that I find it harder again to focus in situations with a lot of sound and a lot of people. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the more well-known side of sensitivity, high sensitivity, like the negative side of overstimulation. And um, yeah, you can find a lot about that. But I, what I really want to talk about in this video is the positive side, like, because everything is a negative side. And um, I think why it is perceived in such a negative way is because of how our society is, um, yeah, how our society works. It's just not so <laughs> sensitivity friendly. So it also depends on the culture, like how, how valued sensitivity actually is, uh, I would say. And in our society, so far, sensitivity is just not, not really valued. Also, because I think people don't understand like what sensitivity can actually do for you 
and that's why I'm here because I'm gonna tell you why sensitivity is important, like high sensitivity. Um, people that are high, highly sensitive, they experience sensations and emotions on a deeper level. So it's like everything is enhanced and that can also be really beautiful. Like I can, I can cry while I read a book. That's, that happens often. And it doesn't have to be out of sadness. It can be because I think something is so beautiful and it just touches me. And I, I feel so much that I can just cry out of happiness. And the same goes for like reading a negative story. Like if I read something really sad, I can also cry. I have it particularly with reading. And I think it's more common to have it with like movies and that kind of content that I have it with reading. And <clears throat> in general, also um, not just in stories, but also in real life, I can feel really touched by things that are happening to me. And um, yeah, I have a really deep sense of enjoyment of a situation. Um, what else, what's also definitely a positive side, the thing that I'm going to talk about right now is a bit more weird because I think sometimes it can seem like highly sensitive people, they seem like a psychic. It seems like a psychic powers. And um, how I would explain that, like why that why that happens is because we we experience like the information coming from the senses we experience them much um, stronger so we can see much more detail we have a very high resolution view of the world and so i don't think that psychic abilities are actually supernatural or anything i actually think that like in reality in tangible reality there are a lot more things that you could notice if you paid attention this this reminds me of sherlock holmes um i don't know if he's a highly sensitive person but i am a fan of sherlock holmes and he's he's always talking about how he can deduce this really crazy things just by looking at yeah things he is seeing through his senses so and then uh, watson is like oh my god how how are you able to deduce that out of nothing and then um then sherlock explains the signs that he was seeing with his senses and everything is like oh wow of course that makes so much sense and i think we're highly sensitive people they they are a bit like sherlock in that sense they they can see they can see more in just like the everyday things than people that are less sensitive and um yeah if you can see a pattern in that in, in that information that very high resolution detailed information you can actually tell a lot about things like about people about what people are feeling or like I don't know what things make predictions whatever and it can seem kind of like a psychic power um so yeah that that's that's really a big thing and i've had a lot of experience with that um that i could actually help people with that because i can't even really completely tell you how that works but um, in particular with reading body language i i can do a lot from reading body language and like i can tell someone's emotional state or like even their like struggles that they are having or something and yeah i'm i'm not saying that i have psychic powers because i don't believe in that but yeah, I can just notice a lot 
about someone and I can I can like help them with that information. <laughs> I notice that it's just really hard for me to explain this. So sorry. You just have to see it for yourself. Um maybe you have seen it for yourself because you recognize yourself in it, like mm. Like you're walking in a room and if you look at the people, you can basically just tell like what what's going on with them, even if they're just smiling and acting like they're completely neutral or something. Or you can walk in a room and just feel the general uh, vibe of what is going on and you can feel it shift as well as the conversation is going it's just it's just crazy what you can actually feel just if you if your sensations are stronger so yeah my personal belief is that being a high sensitive person means that you have some kind of superpower because if reality is enlarged in your perception you are able to see so much more detail and you can notice stuff that other people don't see like imagine that like a person like superman had that kind of power that would be really useful because he he could see like people that need help he could see um like <laughs> situations that need saving because he's paying more attention to like the little signs. Uh, I have a concrete example of uh, one way in which my my sensitivity was a little bit of a superpower. And that's, um, I can always hear from the other side of the house that the gas of the stove is still on and my dad has the habit to leave that on sometimes so yeah i can hear that from the other side of the house and then i'm like dad um you still have the gas on right and then he's like no no and then he walks there and it's like shit you're you were right <laughs> oh my god so like that's that's a really minor situation but potentially that could mean i could save the house from burning down so that's just a concrete example of how sensitivity can actually seem like a superpower that you like notice what is going on in your environment and you can act accordingly um i think sensitive people often feel like what they are um, experiencing is not real but they are weird because like why would I feel that why would I why would I experience that if nobody else did probably there must be something wrong with me and there is also conversation about whether uh, high sensitivity could be a syndrome uh, the thing is they say it can't be because it's too common, like 15 to 20 percent of the population has it. Um, but it still bothers me that that's putting it into a narrative of that it's a negative thing. And I do understand that it's like really hard to, yeah, to live with some of the downsides. But I really hope we can look more at the positive side of it because it's it's a big deal, at least to me. Uh, yeah, I want to draw attention to that. I think, I think highly sensitive people are even more in touch with reality than people with lower sensitivity because they can see the world in more detail. They can see reality in more detail and they are even more in touch with like what's going on in the, in the tangible world than people who are less sensitive. People who are less sensitive, they basically see the world in lower resolution. So they just don't see it because they 
their vision, their like their vision and their auditory abilities, etc. They're they're just not as good as us. We we are uh, we are better at perceiving sensations. Let's just say it like that. Like what if we what if we turn it around? Like people with lower sensitivity, oh poor things, they they are just a little bit more blind than we are. So why is our sensitivity a superpower? Because it's like us HSPs. We can smell, hear, and feel, and taste more than other people can. How is that not a superpower? Because with that superpower, we can help people. And like we live a more intense life, like more, more feeling, intenser, living, that kind of stuff. Like who wouldn't want that? But the struggles are also real, definitely, because still most people aren't as sensitive as we are. So I will probably get into that too, like give you some tips on how to um, how to deal with the challenges of being a high sensitive person in a future video. But I think, uh, yeah, this is what I wanted to share with you, like the positive side of high sensitivity according to my perspective. Thank you for watching. Um, I would really love to hear your personal stories in the comments. I really, really enjoy, um, yeah, if you share something about you or like what you think of the video. I also really appreciate if you subscribe and like this video, especially since I'm so new, every like and subscribe um, makes my heart do a happy leap so thank you very much and see you in the next video